The Beretta 92 and the Sig Sauer P226 share a rivalry that really kind of defines an era in modern handgun history. They are both the quintessential Wonder 9s. They both competed in the U.S. military's XM9 trials of 1985. They uh, both went on to serve the U.S. military in their own ways, and to this day, they both have a loyal following, and the debate still rages about which gun is truly the best. Yet, for all their differences, there is perhaps one thing that the Beretta 92 and the Sig P226 can agree on, and that is that they both fucking hate the Walther P88. And we're going to talk about that today on Hipster Tactical. Right, Walther P88, the most wonderful of the Wonder Nines. And to kind of contextualize that and talk about why I think this is the most wonderful of the Wonder Nines, I want to talk about a little bit about you know the history that that led to this gun's development and the kind of era in which this gun came in, came into the market. So. Go back. If we go back to the early 80s, uh, the U.S. military was looking to replace the 1911 as their standard issue service pistol. They wanted to go to 9mm to be, you know, consistent with all the other NATO countries in caliber, and they wanted something that was higher capacity and um, double action, single action. So they announced this competition, and um, Walther at the time did not have. A pistol that was, you know, met the requirements that the U.S. military was looking for. So their their most advanced gun at the time was the Walther P5, which is exceedingly dope in all respects. Check out my review on it; it's one of my favorites. But they they got to work and put together a prototype that was higher capacity, a bit larger, and um, obviously double action, single action. The P5 was too, but um, they they were kind of late to the game. But in that I think they took cues from a lot of the other designs that were currently on the market. I mean, let's let's look at what's out what was out there already in the mid '80s. The um, the Beretta 92 had existed since the '70s. It was a you know successful high capacity double action single action service pistol. Sig Sauer had the P220, which they just updated the magazine and made it more high capacity to have the 226, so that kind of existed. And then Smith & Wesson had their 459. They were in the triple-digit era of the Smith & Wesson DASA guns by that time. So they had they had something. And um, I I have to think, looking at the P88, I mean, this, this is the compact that, ca that cam came out later after the full size, but looking at this gun you can kind of see a lot of those other guns in this gun. And I, and I have to believe they kind of took cues from what was already out there. They took the best of the ideas that were already out there. And they created something that I think is really the ultimate expression of the handguns of that era, which came to be called the Wonder Nines. Just as an example, looking... You know, comparing this to my Smith and Wesson 5906, their silhouettes are similar. It, you know, it has it has that kind of thin slide profile that you see on on the Smith and Wessons, and it, the the slide is very thin on this. It's um almost as thin as a Browning High Power, but it, it the overall silhouette reminds me of you know a, a Smith and Wesson DASA automatic. Yet the lockup. Um, it has that ejection port lockup, similar to a SIG, uh, and SIG kind of pioneered that that idea, that design, and now it's ubiquitous on, on the handguns we see today. But that was kind of a, a new idea at the time, and, and Walther used that on it as well. 
And if, if you look inside the pistol, it's, uh, you can see a lot of SIG in it, uh, definitely. If you look at the, the feed ramps, it, this is my P225, P6, this is my P88, and it's, it's very similar. You know, it's same kind of depth and overall profile. And also, this is the guide rod and spring for my P225. And, you know, Walther, this is the one from the P88. So Walther used this same um, braided compound spring that, that, again, SIG pioneered for their P200 series guns. I, I think the... I think the grip and the overall grip profile reminds me of a SIG, like a P225 or a P228. Um, here's, here's the P225, and here is, is the P88. And moreover, it is, it is widely known that Walther, um, for, for the magazine on the P88, they basically copied the Beretta 92 magazine. So here's a Beretta 92 mag, and it it basically fits. The, the cutout is in a different location, but um, it basically fits, and I'm sure it would feed if I were to drill. I, I have read on forums that if you drill out the hole, uh, uh, 92 mags will work in a P88. So, long story short, when Walther entered their prototype in the competition, the XM9 competitions, it didn't do well. It had, it had some frame cracks near the dust cover. It, the In drop test, the sights broke off, and uh, they ultimately ended up refining it, after that, and they ended up releasing that prototype as the P88. Uh, I think it was actually in the 87 that they introduced the first ones. But you know, they took kind of what they learned from that, from those trials, made some improvements, and introduced the pistol um, on the commercial market. So I think it's safe to say that, that Walther took inspiration from a lot of what other handgun makers were doing at the time. But Walther being Walther, not only did they kind of combine the best of those design traits, they took the quality and the fit and finish into the stratosphere with this thing. I mean, this thing is just on another level in terms of its, its fit, finish, and feel. It's the slide you can feel it just kind of lock into battery. I mean, there is zero play, zero movement, zero movement in the, the slide to frame. The barrel doesn't move. It's got, and if you look at the barrel, it's um, it's got kind of this belled part here that I, you know, presume kind of helps tighten up the lock up near the muzzle. And Smith & Wesson did that too, so there's another thing they kind of borrowed. But um, the gun isn't, you know, I, I would... I would venture to say a, a 90 SIG P226 probably is has a better fit and finish than some of the other contemporary pistols of that time, but this exceeds that by a large margin. I mean, this thing, I've, I've heard it described as a target gun masquerading or in the body of a service pistol, something like that, and I think that's true. Uh, this thing is you're not going to find a fit and finish like this in most other production guns. It's it's really a nice gun. It's it's the nicest gun I've ever owned, like by a long shot. It's it's super nice. So that's why I think this this gun is worthy of the illustrious distinction of being the most wonderful of the Wonder Nines. It it in so many ways is really a culmination of that entire entire kind of line of thinking when when it came to handgun design and um you know, by by the late 80s, early 90s, when, you know, DASA high-capacity guns were really all the rage, and that's, that's, I guess, what you found in the gun magazines, that's what was hot, this was the ultimate. I mean, well, the full size, the, the compact came later, which I'll get to, but the, the P88 was the ultimate expression of that. So as badass and bougie as this gun was back in, back in the day, the late 80s, early 90s, it was also extremely expensive, and it didn't sell well. And, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the, the price was, but it was way more than like a Beretta 92 or even a Sig P226. So, Walther, in the early 90s, decided to revise the design. And they, they, looked, they were looking to make something that 
was maybe a little less expensive to produce, a little more affordable, and maybe have some features that were a little more relevant to the market at the time. So they eliminated the, the full-size P88 had, um, had that dual-purpose decocker slide stop, kind of like the Walther P5 had. They um, got rid of that, which was a pretty complex piece of engineering, moved to this um, more slide-mounted, or the slide-mounted decocker. They, you know, shortened the barrel and slide a little bit and shortened the grip to make it a little bit more concealed carry friendly because at that time in the 90s, concealed carry was getting more popular and I, I would guess they were looking to kind of um, get in on that market. And um, the, uh, the gun was still expensive and, you know, ultimately didn't, didn't sell all that well. But I just want to say that from my perspective, what Walther ended up with in the P88 compact is really, I think they did it. I, this is everything I want in a DASA carry gun. Now, it feels great in the hand, it's super accurate, the trigger's good. I think the size is perfect, it has the accuracy, the, the quality, the feel, the you know prestige to it. It's just great. I mean, I think Walther nailed it and it kind of sucks they didn't get more recognition for making a gun that's that's this good. Obviously it's it's a a super it's heirloom quality and super accurate and and everything like that but I think Walther at that time got a lot of things right from a concealed carry perspective and look how thin that slide is I mentioned that before but um it's it's more comfortable to carry inside the waistband than than most SIGs like the the slide is about the same thickness I'd say as a Browning high power it's even a little thinner than I compared it to my 5906, which which has a pretty thin slide, like 1911 width. It's even thinner than that, so it's very comfortable to carry. And um, I also say the levers that that Walther used they don't stick out quite as much as some of the other designs. Like the the ones on the Smith and Wessons are like you know, the slide stop lever on the Smith and Wesson third gens. It's like a knife. I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous. Um, and you know, Walther had the foresight to eliminate that part of it. The grip is, you know, just short enough that it's not going to really stick out when you're when you're when I'm carrying it up here, and like they they kind of cross that threshold. It, it's shorter than like a P228, so I think they, you know, in that respect, it's superior to a P228. I'll also add that this gun has been 100% reliable for me in the time I've had it, and I haven't put thousands of rounds through it, but I've put a couple hundred and um, taken it to the range on several different occasions. The first time, um, first time I took it, I, I loaded up some, you know, just kind of a random assortment of different ammo, some remanufactured, uh, some of the same remanufactured ammo that, that caused some failures to feed in my CZPCR, my Browning High Power, some random old hollow points I found like in the back of an ammo case, and um, just some, some other stuff too, but it ran it all. It ran it perfectly and I was a little concerned just just because of how tight the gun is and um, you know sometimes guns that are super tight they need a little bit of a break-in period but none of that with this it, it cycled everything it, it ran everything perfectly and um, I, I, that's not surprising you know this gun was designed to be a service pistol for the US military so um, I think reliability is, is part is inherent to the design and you know as they iterated and, and perfected the P88 full size, and ultimately, you know, the the final iteration being the P88 compact. I think this is a superbly reliable, dependable, um, service grade handgun. So, is there anything not to like about it? Well, I the trigger reach is a little long and double action. I will say that. You know, having short fingers, you can see my, you know, my fingers barely barely reaching that, but you know, it's smooth, it's it's still heavy, it's a double action trigger, as it should be, but like the P5, it has an over-travel stop, so even if your pull's not perfect, 
that um, over travel stop is going to give you uh, you know a little bit of margin for error um, there and it, yeah I can shoot this in double action fine you know I can hit um, 10 yards hit you know the head of a silhouette 25 yards I can hit a silhouette and the single action is really good the the grip you know this it has this kind of um, slope back strap there and, and that goes back to the trigger reach I'd probably prefer a little bit straighter, you know, and I, I want to say the prototype they used in the XM9 trials, XM9 trials actually had a straighter back strap, so um, that's one thing I could do without, but it's fine, it's not, it doesn't get in the way, it still feels really good in, um, in single action, it's, it's just perfect. Another thing about how this gun shoots, it's so perfect, it, it almost feels clinical in some ways and and in in some sense that's not a bad thing like it's just it shoots perfectly and it, you know it's a hole appears where you want it and um but i i don't yeah compared to like a, a the walter p5 which i reviewed and and it's locking block cousin the beretta 92 it doesn't quite have that feel that that those guns have and and really most guns don't because those guns use the the falling block locking system and I, I think that contributes to how they just have a unique uniquely communicative feel to the way they shoot and just talking about its accuracy I I think this is you know for a service pistol this is mechanically speaking one of the most accurate you'll find um, I think it's you know, just judging from how tight the lockup is and the fact that it has muzzle support, I, I think it's, like, like they say, it has probably target gun potential. Maybe not quite as to the level of like a Swiss P210. I've, I've never actually shot one of those, but I hear those are just on another level. But, you, you know, compared to a Beretta or a SIG, I, I think this thing's going to be more accurate. I don't necessarily see a huge difference on the target when I'm shooting at intermediate distances. You know, I I brought my tooth one of my P239s to the range the other day and like you know, I hadn't shot it in a while and I mean I just put up a group like that. I mean that those guns are very accurate and I, I think you know, if you bench rested it you'd probably find more accuracy out of this, but can you really you know, take advantage of that in like just shooting offhand, maybe you get the sense that you know your sh bullets are going through the same hole with this gun. I guess a little more, like the same exact hole, more than some other guns. Let's say you want to get one of these. Uh, like, like I said, they're they're pricey, and uh, I'm not trying to brag that I look at this expensive gun I got. And I really, the only reason I have one is because I I lucked out, and a local gun shop didn't know what they had. Um, but you know, if you look on Gun Broker, used ones that are you can find actually surplus trade ins um, sometimes that come from Israel, and those are seen some use and full size and compacts, and even those are usually over a thousand dollars. Gun Broker prices that's probably what you're going to pay for more pristine examples, you're going to pay well over a thousand dollars. And I, I want to say the full size models usually cost a little more than the compacts but I, I don't know that for sure um, so I mean just just look <laughs> you know maybe on forums look for opportunities and that's that's how you can score some you know some really cool guns for, for decent prices just keep your eyes peeled for deals look at your local gun shops and you never know what's gonna what's gonna you know come in and, and show up on the shelves there so in conclusion I feel that the P88 Compact squarely delivers on being the class-leading example of, you know, the Wonder 9 era. It's it's great. They they nailed it, and unfortunately, um, it just didn't catch on. It was it was probably still too expensive, and it's also worth noting that the assault weapons ban happened in '94, and this being a 14-round capacity gun, it People were probably looking at, at other things. They didn't want to buy something this expensive with a neutered magazine. So it just didn't work out for Walther, unfortunately, like um, it should have. <laughs> and uh, it's it's a fantastic gun. And um, I think if you can get your hands on one, 
it's really worth it. It's it's a great addition to your collection, and I think it's a especially the compact. I think it's a a practical, usable, great just all around concealed carry gun shooter. And like if I don't know if I were going to sell every gun in my collection and just keep one, this would probably be it. I mean, I think it can do everything. It's it's a target gun. It's a duty gun. It's a carry gun. It's a high capacity gun. It's a DASA gun. It's it's everything, and um, I think it's it's just wonderful. And um, I'm very proud to own it, and happy I got a chance to own it. And um, I think you will be too if you get your hands on one. So. Again, thank you for watching, and if you check out the written review on hipstertactical.com, and if you like beats like the one I did in the intro, check out my SoundCloud. So the link is also in the description. So thanks again, and until next time, this is Hipster Tactical, and I'm Matt.